Hi everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe. And we have a brand new build on the bench. It has been a while since I've been at the bench. That's a whole nother story, but uh, more to come on that later. Uh, but I'm thrilled to be back and I'm thrilled to be building something that is more in my sort of uh, world, uh, as, as it were. So in uh, 1996, for those of you who didn't know, I brought back Doctor Who starring Paul McGann. And uh, one of the greatest honors and pleasures I had in my life was to be able to work uh, on such a, a storied and awesome uh, project. And uh, it was a life long sort of dream to do it and uh, there you go uh, now uh, all these years later uh, I uh, enjoy so much camaraderie with some of the great fans who love uh, the film and uh, I really enjoy getting a chance to meet them at conventions and talk about it on various different podcasts and, and uh, private you know YouTube channels and that sort of a thing but anyway uh, what I never thought I'd be doing is sitting here building a scaled version of the 8th Doctor's TARDIS console. And here I am. And I have to first of all say a big shout out to the great Jeff Fink, who is the designer of this kit. And um, he uh, was um, so kind enough to share with me uh, the files so that I could uh, print my own. Parts are in PLA and parts are in resin. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But I would be completely remiss if I didn't give a big shout out to the great Steve Williams over in the UK who has uh, shared with me and cut for me uh, some of the parts, uh, laser cut them in wood. Extraordinary. And the detail is just blowing me away. So we're going to build this on the channel. It's going to take a little while, so please be patient with me. But I wanted to get this video out for a couple of reasons. One, because uh, the next few months are going to be a little tricky for me in terms of being able to be in the hobby shop. We have another big project uh, going, and uh, so it's taking me away from the bench. Surprise, surprise. But I promise you I'm going to do everything I can to stay current on Instagram. I am building a few things. I'm, I'm building up a VW bus for a dear, dear friend. Uh, we've got the TARDIS console obviously right now on the bench, and we're going to start in on the 22-inch um, uh, Eagle uh, from MPC. Uh, we're going to be doing that as well. But right now, I want to talk about this. I want to focus on this because there's a lot to get to um, and a lot to explain. Now. I should tell you that uh, as I film this, I'm still printing parts. So uh, it's taking me a little while. Some of them um, I'm building in resin, and some are working real in, uh, really well in resin, and other parts uh, are doing okay in PLA. And for some reason, um, I couldn't, I just couldn't get them to print um, in, uh, in resin. I don't know why, they, um, and some, some did. Uh, but hey, th there you go. Um, so let's start. Um, let me sort of deconstruct what I have here because it's really kind of cool. It all starts with uh, this base, which I have not glued together yet, uh, but will obviously. Um, it is. It comes in in four parts. Uh, the two bases, uh, the two base tops that connect, and then two underneath pieces to give you that thickness. And the whole thing sort of goes together. I have glued the two halves, but I have not glued them together. I will do that before I start, because you need to do that uh, before you, you, you start doing with everything else. Um, it's MDF, laser cut. It looks extraordinary. So uh, once it's glued together, it's going to get stains and washes, and it should start to look like the original floor. On my set, which was beautifully designed by Richard Houdolin, uh, we obviously used MDF on our floors. And um, er everything was obviously stained and painted. We had amazing technicians who did an awful lot to make a lot of wood look like steel and, uh, and, and, and all kinds of things like that. Um, so 
we're going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of things to sort of create some fun textures for it and, and um, I'm going to go through the lighting and, and, and do everything I can to sort of explain to you where we are in this intro episode and then the next time you see me hopefully we will have printed out uh, even more if not everything and I, I'll, I'll sort of start to assemble and, 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 and paint some things and it, it should go together relatively quickly once uh, everything is printed. Uh, the only uh, the, the only tricky part here is going to be the lighting and the lighting design, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, so here we are. Here's the base, and uh, what what you have is, um, and I, I'm going to put a picture up right here of the set, so you can see what we're dealing with, um, and there it is. And so. You can see from, uh, from that that we've got six of these beams or these struts, beautifully cut by Steve Williams. And um, he uh, w w was kind enough to send me this. Now, I will say, Steve has a Facebook page called Outpost Doctor Who. Go check it out. And he's promised me that he's going to be posting here uh, the, these videos back on the, the Facebook page. So hopefully a lot of the guys who are building this, uh, who are going to be obviously far better at it than me, can get a big chuckle out of the, uh, the old executive producer building his own. <laughs> so it'll be fun. Um, but anyway, here we are, and you get, uh, you get six of these, and they come with the, um, the inside uh, strut and then the outside plate to give you this sort of wonderful dynamic. And... Uh, there are six of those, and they get bottom and top bottom struts, which will hold them together. And then along with those, I'm printing out these, um, what are essentially uh, supposed to be your sort of iron, looking very sort of steampunk Victorian. That was really a lot of what we went for um, in, this, in this set. And um, so I'm building these. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna have um, uh, two sets of well, I say there's four pieces, and so I've got to to print five more pairs of these along with uh, these uh, splicer plates that will go over it. Um, and what these do is they sit beautifully. Uh, between these ribs. Now, I'm not going to be able to really show you what this looks like, but you can see from the production still what it will look like. Uh, but I, if I sandwich these together very carefully uh, there um, and hold that to camera, you can see what that's going to look like. And it's, it's going to look pretty cool. And so that will make up the six struts that um, connect up to these top beams here, and I've glued one set of these together, and they'll get uh, a spacer that sits in between them. And the whole thing is connected together with these bottom and top pieces, which I've, uh, I printed PLA. Now, if you're to look at these, uh, these top pieces and these bottom pieces, they look a little crude, but fear not, I have a plan for that. But you can see they sit uh, on these feet, uh, which are quite dynamic, and then these t uh, these um, barrels go on top like such, and then um, once the barrels are on top, then uh, these uh, connector beams go out like this. Um, let me get a little wider here for you, so um, we can show you this here. Uh, these connector beams like, like this. Of course, my fat fingers are in the way. I apologize. There, something like that. And <clears throat> there's six of those. And they all connect to a central core. Here it is. And it has a top cap, which uh, they built the seal of Rassilon on top. Isn't that great? Um, here, I'll, I'll show you there. Uh, so you've got this wonderful seal of Rassilon on the very top, which we didn't have on our set, but hey, it looks finished, and it probably should have been there. Um, and I must say, the laser-cut pieces fit beautifully into the PLA. 
So lots of chunkage. I mean, look at this. I'm not even holding that. I literally just sat, pushed that in, and uh, it's, it's sitting there all on its own. That is how beautifully this has been cut and designed. Um, very, very impressive. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, so I will continue to, uh, to print those pieces. Um, and, and I want to just talk a little bit about my plan for this because it's sort of exciting. Um, I am going to be using something called Metal Effects from Modern Masters. This is an oxidizing iron paint. It's from Rust-Oleum. And uh, I'll make sure uh, that everything I use um, is, is in the complete build list, which will be on my website, spruverse.com, um, and I'll post links, uh, information on these things as we go. But, but that is what I am using. Now, I've used this before on my 32-inch Nautilus, um, which was an all-resin construction, and this is fantastic. So, and, and we're, going to be, we're going to be doing a little bit of this on camera today because I do want to share it with you. Uh, basically, uh, you prime it first, which is what I've done here, and then you put this textured metalizer on it, and it's going to just work on this charm. And then when it is uh, starting to dry, you just hit it with this, uh, this rusty spray, and it'll make everything go rusty. And then what we're going to do is obviously finish that with some, some greens and some blues, and some patinas, but that's essentially to mimic the look of those struts. Um, and um, obviously, uh, the bottoms will be steel-colored uh, or a gunmetal, and then the actual struts themselves will will be in that in that sort of patinaed uh, metal, just to give it some some texture. And then, of course, as we come up to the the top of the time rotor, the very very top of it. Um, these, these elements will actually um, uh, uh, be a sort of gray um, and, uh, but, but I'm, going to, I'm going to obviously have to do some patching and some painting here and then we'll seal everything. But I am gonna do it uh, in, in the oxidizing uh, uh, metal effects paint because it adds a, a really cool texture to this no matter what color you end up painting it. So that's going to be great. So that takes care of the base and the, uh, all the laser cut pieces, which create the, uh, the, 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 the sort of surround that encases the time rotor and the actual console. And so <clears throat> the console itself has a, a, a plinth or a pedestal, and here it is. Um, I have um, actually done this in, in PLA. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy with that, the crudeness of this. Like I said, once I put the oxidizing paint on it, it will be great. The other thing I've noticed too, by the way, with this PLA, I don't know if you guys have tried this, but I, I think it works uh, a real charm, is my sprue goo. So this is uh, something we're all using, right, uh, as uh, filler. So this is just sprues um, and um, they're, they're in, um, essentially, uh, they're in the, the actual cement itself. When these bottles get down to almost nothing, even though we know now the secret of how you actually extend the, the brush in them, um, you collect all of that and you, you fill up a bottle with it with your sprue go. And I found that my sprue go, my sprue go, is actually filling in a lot of the PLA cracks uh, where it, it's just not meshed nicely. And it's doing a really nice job. But, you know, um, I just think it adds a, a lot of texture to this, and so it's going to be really fine. Now, I'm obviously going to be drilling a hole through the center of this once it's all glued together um, so that my um, electronics can hide in the base. Um, it's also why they've, they've sort of done that for you, so you have a... Um, you have a, a place in, uh, underneath when it uh, is all said and done for you to hide your, your electronics. Um, most likely, I will power this up with a, with a transformer uh, to a 9-volt system, um, but more on that later. Okay, so here's my pedestal, and that will go there. Then I've got my, um, believe it or not, my resin 
printed um, console, but my PLA printed base. <clears throat> I don't know why some of the files are printing beautifully in resin and some of them just don't want to. They're okay in, um, in, uh, in PLA, but, but not in resin. It's curious. I don't know why. But anyway, there is a bottom and a top. And the great thing about this, this cap comes off and you've got plenty of room inside to hide all of your lights, um, which we will be lighting this baby up. And so uh, that will sit here. Now, I will show you that the plinth itself has all of this wonderful stuff. You've got the, uh, the feet. Um, let me take this off for a second and show you. You've got these wonderful feet, which I've printed. Um, uh, I printed these in resin. I've got to clean up these holes a little bit here. I have to be very careful that I don't snap or break anything. But um, any anyway, they will sit in here like this. Um, and that sort of sits like that. Now, obviously, we'll make sure that these are sitting on the floor nicely like this. And um, they will be in a sort of steel pewter kind of color, but the balls themselves, which were supposed to be sort of the earth, they'll be in a blue. Um, and then you've got these uh, strut supports, um, which I also I printed these in PLA, and they will sit here um, on, on the sides of the, uh, of the console. And then the console itself uh, will just will just sit on top like this. And so there's the console, and that's looking really good. Uh, there is a cap or a ring that connects to the time rotor, and I've printed one of those in resin successfully, and that will sit on top like that. I've got some um, some some plastic or uh, some some tubing coming. Uh, it's a one inch tubing. Uh, that will create the time rotor itself. And then the internal workings of the time rotor are these caps. And, um, and I'll uh, try to show you that there. That there's these caps here, and then there are these, um, uh, these little spindles with holes in them, and they'll hold the, uh, the glass rods that will go in there. And they'll be at, obviously at 45 degree angles. Here's another reference photo for you to see what I'm talking about. And you can see how that works. So there's a top and the bottom for that. And then um, the actual control surfaces, they were printed very successfully in resin. Now they're still on their trees because I haven't pulled them out yet. Uh, but um, I, they did a really nice job printing in clear resin. Uh, and here they are. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very happy with these. And um, they um, will come off the trees and they'll, they'll, they'll the sort of the various different uh, boxes and things will go where they need to go. And, um, and they, they sort of surround it. And those control surfaces, um, I've got a, a fantastic uh, guide which comes with this, which is just extraordinary. I mean, the quality and the thought that has gone into this is just extraordinary. Um, and so you've got this wonderful guide here that you can follow here. You can see what I'm talking about um, with the, uh, sure, I mean, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you can see what I'm talking about here with respect to the time rotor and how the tube works um, and how it relates to uh, to that picture. Uh, th so this is what we're looking at. Um, and you can see here that um, it shows you really nicely how the, uh, the, the base, the plinth is put together, uh, the control surface, the cap for the time rotor, and how the time rotor starts to connect to the very top, and you end up with that. And so um, that's going to be a thing of beauty. And I promised uh, Jeff Fink that I will not, and, and I will not, start to glue anything together until I've Zoomed call with him and we've gone through everything just to make sure I've got everything I need and everything is correct and we'll sort of talk, talk through it. Um, but uh, th that's, um, th that's going to be in the, in the near future. 
Now, today I had a, a great conference call with my dear friend Randy Newbert at Voodoo Effects. If you don't know about Randy and his company Voodoo Effects, you should. He's one of the preeminent FX, FX guys uh, who works in the model business and his lighting kits are superb. Um, and he has a great website, Voodoo Effects. Go check him out. I'll put a link in the description below and uh, you can check out his work and he's kindly working with me on this project and he's going to put together my lighting kit as he does for all of my big builds like my ET mothership. He, um, he designed and created all of that lighting for me. So uh, as you can see, that is going to be a lot of work because even though these uh, control surfaces, which are again still on their trays, um, will sit nicely on here. I've got to drill out all of these holes. Um, some of it I wanted to run fiber optics to. Uh, Randy thinks we're going to be better off not doing that. Um, he's got a solution to that, which I, I will share with you when uh, the entire electrics uh, package arrives. Uh, but uh, we're going to have everything lit. Um, some of the control surfaces will be blinking and uh, the, the rotor itself will actually uh, be able to, uh, to, to, to be lit up as well. Um, don't know about getting it to rise and fall. I do have a thought about that because there is plenty of room in uh, the top of the core here. Um, you can see uh, I've got a good, I would say, boom, 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 boom. let me get a ruler out. I mean, it's pretty big. It's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's about three and a, three and a quarter inches. Um, and this is completely hollow. So I've got some room in here to do something if I can figure out how to make the inside of the rotor rise and fall. Don't know if I can. Um, it's a dream right now, but we're certainly going to have it lit for sure in, in that beautiful cobalt blue. Um, and so that will take care of the console itself. Um, I've got um, some interesting... Um, uh, paint choices here because uh, what happened was was the 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 whole thing was stained in a sort of ma mahogany um, and then it was too dark and so we we actually sanded it back and lightened it up uh, for camera and um, on on camera in, in under the lighting condition it looks a lot redder than it actually was. Um, it was it was much more of, of a sort of reddish mahogany brown, uh, almost uh, towards a walnut, really, uh, than it appears on camera. But, you know, once all those film lights are, are up, and in those days, you know, we were still using the halogens and, 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 and spots. We didn't have LEDs uh, as we do today, so the sets are obviously a lot cooler, and we have a lot more control over light. But anyway, so the time rotor will go in. You can imagine what that's going to look like uh, with the canopy completely over it, um, and that's going to be stunning. I think it's going to be stunning. Um, but on camera, what I wanted to do now is I just wanted to show you a little bit of this uh, metallizing paint um, just, to, just to have some fun with it and do a little bit of building. Otherwise, it's a whole bunch of show and tell, and uh, that can be a little boring. But um, so um, I'm using a little disposable sponge. Um, oh, I should say before I do this, uh, let me back up just a second because we've even got the monitor. Um, I've, I've only printed a couple of parts for it. Here's the box, here's the front and the back, and then it's going to have, look at this, isn't, isn't this great? <laughs> this was the monitor. They found an old TV uh, for, for the film itself and put it inside this box. But isn't that great? I, I just think that's, that's genius. Um, and so what we'll do is, is we'll, 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 we'll sort of find a way to put some kind of a, um, a paint on this. Now, what I discovered uh, is, uh, and I don't know if you know about this, but the, uh, the paints that you find to touch up refrigerators um, almost have like a ceramic, uh, they're, they're ceramic paints almost. And they go beautifully on here. They create that perfect uh, uh, shine that you get with that, that 
that sort of 1930s uh, uh, plastic. You know, that was sort of um, everything was it was, it was sort of the, the big rage back then. Um, all this plastic ended up in, uh, in big ships and all kinds of things they were using with it. They, were, they just loved their plastic. Anyway, this will get some kind of a case uh, like this, um, and it'll get a scissor lift as well, and it'll dangle from the set, um, and I will build a transparency for it, for the screen. So that's really kind of cool. I just wanted to share that with you uh, before we dive into this. Now, uh, <clears throat> what, I'm, what I'm most excited about is the fact that there are so many great products on the market now that you can work with that can really enhance your PLA um, builds, uh, especially when you're doing things like this in, in, the, in the sort of the, what I call the, um, uh, the steampunk sort of world. Um, now, what you want to do is, is when you get this, when you get this on, um, what you want to do is um, you, you want to just sort of be uh, liberal with it, but don't worry about it being um, sort of perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so what I'll do is, is I'll just get this on here and then I'll show it to camera. Um, but it's, it's got this kind of gritty, interesting um, uh, iron, it's got iron particles in, in, in it. And they're going to create that incredibly awesome texture. It's very cool. Um, now, this may need a couple of coats. In fact, I think I will give it a couple of coats. But I really wanted to do this on camera for you because I wanted to just sort of share with you some of my techniques. And these are things that I've been learning over time. And it's just so much fun when you start to, to really um, get your techniques down. Um, and, you know, um, some model makers keep all of their stuff secret, and I appreciate that and respect it. Um, especially the ones that work on commission. But here we're sort of a test kitchen, and I want to share with you what I'm doing and using and learning in case it benefits you. And I have to say, a lot of the guys that follow me have been awesome in sharing their techniques with me, and I really appreciate it um, because that's how, as a community, we learn how to, 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 to sort of just do all of these things together. Now, um, I can only do these two parts because I haven't primed the other ones, um, but um, this will, will start to, to dry. And as it starts to dry, it will take on this wonderful patina. Um, and that, that's the bit that's really exciting. Um, now, you, you, you want to be kind of haphazard with it um, because you, you want that texture to really... To work, but it doesn't have to be perfect. But that's how we that's how we're going to um, that's how we're going to do that. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, it's a lot of fun. Um, some guys are actually uh, just using sort of uh, uh, vinegar to spray on this to hit it to oxidize it. But I'm using the formula that comes with this kit. Um, it's not cheap, but uh, a bottle like this, a jar like this, is going to last you for the rest of your life. So, um, you know, it's a $40, $50 investment, but, but you'll, you'll, you'll always have it. Um, so that's what these pieces look like painted uh, with the uh, metallizing effect. And when that dries, um, I'm going to be able to do all kinds of fun things with it. And um, I'll, I'll share some of these pictures with you on my Instagram account, uh, which is Spruverse, uh, at Spruverse. Um, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing, um, but it's um, you can see uh, it's quite it's quite effective, and um, even now it's starting to dry and it, it, it's creating that that patina that sort of texture. And once I hit that with the the ruster, um, you know that 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 will cause all kinds of fun things to start happening. So there we are. This is the Eighth Doctor's console. Um, from the TARDIS, uh, and uh, we are building it here on the channel, and I couldn't be more excited. Um, I hope you follow this build. As I said, please, please bear with me over the next several months. I do apologize. I'm not going to be able to get out as much content as I had hoped to, uh, just simply because of my schedule. 
Uh, but exciting things are happening, and I can share those with you um, at a later date. Um, so there we are. We're thick into it. Um, and as I said, uh, the next time we meet on this project, um, hopefully I'll have everything printed, would have spoken to Jeff, and uh, we'll, we'll be building. And, and of course, one of the, 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 the trickiest things we'll be doing is, is figuring out the, the lighting for, for this thing. And it's massive, you know. I mean, it, 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 it's, quite a, it, it's quite a thing. It's going to take up an awful lot of real estate. So um, I'm going to have to do some negotiating with my wife to, to see where we put this. But um, it'll definitely be in a place of honor for me personally because of what it represents to me. So there you are. Uh, Paul McGann's console from the Doctor Who movie, 1996. Um, it's a Richard Houdolan set. It is a Jeffrey Fink design, uh, and it is uh, a Steve Williams um, uh, laser cut set around it. Uh, guys, thank you so much for trusting me with this and uh, your friendship and uh, your time. I really appreciate it, um, and we will continue. So until we meet again, please be well, be safe, build something, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.